Okay, so we just got controller, rumble, haptic feedback, vibration, whatever you want to call it, support working using an engine derived directly from Tesseract. This has been an ongoing project for about two days now. After about a week long project, getting controllers and hot swapping support working in the game or engine as well. So my computer just started up. I'm going to be demonstrating this in this video today. So we have a series of controllers here, one of which is not supported by the engine because it doesn't have an analog stick. Hello! This one. It's a great controller, don't get me wrong. Just my first controller, but for first person shooter games you can see why this one just might cause some trouble. How am I supposed to look around? Maybe these four buttons right here. Whatever. I've got a PlayStation 3 USB third party controller. I've got a Sidewinder Microsoft controller. I mean, look at that thing. It's like an alien. Um, and then lastly, I have two Logitech controllers. Now this is my first Logitech controller, and it's got your basic PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 DualShock layout. Um, works pretty well. And then this is the Logitech Rumble Pad 2, which, given the name, has Rumble support. Um, in the controller world from like the 1990s or 2000s, Rumble would be what this was called. And um, in later technology devices, you've got iPhones and Android phones with little motors in it. And in those, it's considered haptic feedback. Well, the engine looks at it as a haptic feedback device. So whether you call it rumble, or vibration, or shock, or whatever, this does it now in the engine. So I'm going to go ahead and get to it, and pull up the game. And the way that, before I do this, I'm going to explain something. We've got all these controllers set up, and it adds them one by one when it opens up the game actually whenever it detects that they're plugged in so you can now open the game and plug in a controller afterwards and it'll say hey there's a new controller and I'm going to go ahead and use it and it picks it up and it just works you unplug it it says oh this isn't this isn't here anymore and it looks for any possible other controllers and it selects those as well um, if you close the game, it immediately when it saves the settings, it's going to say, hey, you used this controller last. So we're going to go ahead and start using this one immediately, unless you change any of the others. So it actually remembers your last used controller, which I think is just fantastic. Um, only took about an hour or so to implement because the SDL library is kind of a completely different language. So, if you've made it this far, don't worry, we're getting into it now. So, how it's going to work is I'm going to open it, the game's going to load, it's going to go through that process I just described and load this controller, and when it does, it's going to test for haptic feedback support. And how it does this is it looks for haptic feedback devices, which this is, it makes sure that this is one of them and then it opens the feedback device for use so it's going to open the it's going to connect to the motors and then it's going to run through a series of two tests a simple rumble which is just a very short vibration and then a 50% strength 
rumble for two seconds, which is a little more advanced in the code. And basically what this tells it is, if it can't do those two things, it's not going to be able to work for it in the game. And it shuts down the connection, and it just uses the controller as is. Um, this does not work, at least for my controller in STL 2.0.4. So I upgrade to 2.0.5 earlier today, and it works. So I'm going to get to it. So opening the game, and just listen to the controller. So you just heard that. So I have a haptic test here. So go ahead and open up the console, and I'm going to type in haptic that's haptic setup which it just ran and haptic test when I hit enter it's going to go through a series of completely customized rumbles or vibration feedback here we go and there it is I'll go ahead and just just demo some of the some of the controls so as you can see here, the mouse cursor is moving. Now, this is being moved with this analog stick. Well, it works with any analog stick that shows up as an Axie now. So you can use whichever one you prefer and feels best. Most likely, people are going to want to use this one in the menus, but it works then implemented in the controller or in this case joystick API we have button support so I can just using the controller select a menu I'll go ahead and load up steel ribs alright so since I am trying to hold the controller and film at the same time. I'm not going to be able to show everything at once. So here we have standard moving. Woo! And this is all using the controller. Then we have crouching, zoom. We have edit mode. Though that may not be an actual in-game feature that's just for testing edit bindings and how a controller might work inside edit mode which will be another video um, we've got let's see I'll just try to set the controller on the ground we've got looking so it looks around um, we have different sensitivities for each FOV so at max this is how fast that rotates at max that's how fast that rotates so because it's letterbox this is better um, gonna try to make this more dynamic so that you can just play the game and it does the field of view sensitivity settings or the looking sensitivity based on your screen size so if you have a square screen it'll be more square. If you have a letterbox, it'll be more letterbox in nature. So that'll just be a simple ratio. And it shouldn't be too hard to do. I just haven't gone around to it since haptic feedback was a lot more intriguing and fun to try to implement and frustrating. Got weapon switching, um, melee firing, basic modes. We got jumping, clicking the looking analog stick, and we've got melee clicking the um, moving analog stick. Now, in Iron Fist, this was crouch, but if you're trying to press down on the analog stick and trying to move with any sort of decency, you're kind of screwed. So, that's what I've got so far. Um, bring up the menu using your standard menu button. Um, and press and hold on the, I guess, guide button is what it would be called for some Xbox users. Um, select if you are familiar with PlayStation, that brings up the scores. And if I go ahead and add some bots, 
I can see that someone's shooting at me, and since I can't... Ah, uh, killed. Alright. Maybe I can actually see them when they're... Oh, they're gonna... Oh! Damn, got me good. Alright, um... Oh, wow. Now, if you're actually playing and not trying to film at the same time, the bots are actually... Yeah, they're competitive. I mean, they're quite... Um, but they're not this good. Um, I'm just really bad right now because, well, let's face it, playing a game with one hand on a gaming controller, that's just, some people might call it dumb. See? Now I'm bouncing, and now... Okay. Well... I've wasted enough time here, just thought that was real cool, the whole haptic feedback test. That's just great, that's just great. So when you're landing and the screen shakes, when you're near a bomb and the screen shakes, when you're doing something that impacts the player, we'll be able to send feedback to a controller and just increase the immersion just that little bit. I'm looking really forward to it and hopefully I'll be able to demo another video with it actually in action. But for now, guess I'll see you later.